So I was out on my home lake the other day watching the grass cutting machines go along the bank, picking up all the grass like they do every year, and it really got me thinking about a video on how cutting grass and killing grass affects the fishing on a lake because it's something that I deal with every year, so I've kind of adapted to it and just expect it every year. But I really want to talk to you guys about how it affects your lakes and how cutting and killing the grass changes the fishery and what the fish do. So today what I'm going to talk about is I'm going to talk about what cutting and killing the grass does, how the fish transition, and some of the key tactics and baits at the end of this video that really are going to help you be better prepared for when you see it on your lake. So stay tuned, you're not going to want to miss this one. So right off the bat, they have two ways that they get rid of grass primarily across each state. They have big machines that will go through and cut it and manually remove it. You might notice this by when you look at your down imaging, seeing grass that is four foot below the surface and completely cut off. Or you'll just see the big orange machines going along the bank and picking it up. And then they also use chemicals to kill it all. And there's two different ways. I prefer they cut it because it doesn't damage the fishery as much as opposed to when they kill it when they use chemicals to actually go in and kill it. And it, both of them are really have a negative effect on the fishery because it takes the system that has all of this nutrients from the grass. It has all this nutrients, all this cover, all this forage, and these fish get acclimated to it and then they get rid of it. And so all of a sudden you have all these fish that rely on it and expect it and now they don't have it and so it tends to kill a lot of fish off. They claim it doesn't kill any fish whatsoever, but it does. Not directly, but indirectly it kills fish. And so one thing you have to notice about it is if I can fish away from an area they do that, I typically always try to because it generally is not gonna be as good as the areas that still have that grass. So if that's an option on your lake and you get to a lake and you're like, well, they killed the grass on this end, I would go to the other end. Typically that's the best way to go. But if you get to a lake and you're like, well, they killed all the grass in the lake, this is how things genuinely transition. So what happens is they kill the grass or they cut the grass and so the fish start to leave those areas. But the key is they can't kill or cut at all. They might try, but there's always something that remains. Whether it's short grass that they couldn't reach out deeper, or it's an area that they just didn't spray because they tried to spray it all, but it doesn't get everything every time, or there's some type of grass that remains. And so what you have to understand is the grass that might not have been good before is great now because you might have a lake that had milfoil and hydrilla in it and then eelgrass, but the milfoil and the hydrilla are the most susceptible to getting killed. So now all of a sudden there's just eelgrass. Well, that eelgrass is now phenomenal. And it doesn't have to be just eelgrass. It could be any pond weed or anything. No grass versus crappy grass. The crappy grass now becomes amazing. So you have to keep that in mind. That's the first thing that I want to talk about. You can also find patches of isolated milfoil and hydrilla that they missed. And if you find one of those, it can hold like 30 bass in it. It can be a little gold mine. And so sometimes getting behind your graph and idling looking for that live grass can be really, really key too. But sometimes the best way to find it is just with your eyes. So a lot of times I'll get on my trolling motor in areas that I know typically had good grass and just look and see what grass is still green, doesn't have that brown look to it, it's not floating all over the place, the water typically gets dirtier, because normally when you get into a grass patch, the water's clean and filtered, right? When they kill it, it's brown. That water gets an algae bloom to it, and it just doesn't look clean, and that's a good indication that they killed that grass. So you can find the needle in a haystack, or you can look for the crappy grass that became amazing, or what ends up happening when they kill all of the grass, is those fish are now gonna transition from grass cover to more hard cover objects. And that's something that people often forget about, is when they kill that grass, those fish still have to have something to live on. So a lot of times what I like to look for is structure on the bank. You know, one lake that I have it happen to me all the time is when they kill that grass, those fish go to the docks on the bank. So if I get into an area that had great grass and they killed it, I'm gonna go up shallower and look for brush and stuff on the bank. I'm gonna look for docks that they can possibly get on. And then I'm also gonna look for hard cover out deep. But typically these fish are gonna try to get away from that a little bit because again, when they kill that grass, it depletes oxygen instead of creates it. So those fish will usually get shallower and get away from that dead dying grass and try to get away from that. Or they'll just move areas completely and try to get away from that. So I look for hard cover out deep. I fish the docks or I'm gonna go find isolated and clean patches of grass. Those are the four best ways that I can avoid that grass kill and really make it a success. 
because oftentimes people get super, super discouraged when they get to a lake and the grass is killed, but it presents opportunity to find a little gold mine that nobody else is going to find. And that can be really, really key. So as promised, I want to talk about some of my baits and my tactics that I use for this specific situation. One thing that I'm obviously going to go to is a jig skipping docks. That's some of my favorite tactics for when they kill that grass. It's usually a great approach to it. I either have a jig or I have a Sanko. I don't really mix it up when it comes to grass kill and I'm fishing docks because I'm trying to run as many docks as I physically can in a given day. So typically I keep a jig in my hand. Most oftentimes I keep a 3 16 or a quarter ounce jig in my hand because what happens is when they kill that grass, there's no more grass around these docks and so you get really muddy silty bottoms and dead decaying grass on the bottom around these docks because they have machines that go in between the docks and will pull the grass up but they can't get too close to the docks right so a lot of times there's still grass around each one of those docks which is pretty cool because it creates like a little casing for those fish to hide in still and so you'll have grass underneath those docks in a lot of cases and so if you go to a typical half ounce jig what ends up happening is you have to put that jig on that fish's nose or else he doesn't have time to eat it before it sinks into the mud and the silt. So I like to go to that quarter ounce because it has fall time. I'll put a twin tail grub on it or a Z-Man craw where it has big tails on there, a hella craw or a turbo craw. So it slows that fall rate down even more. So it has a lot of time from when that bait skips back in there because it skips way better too. From when it skips back in there to as it's falling, those fish have time to go, what was that? There it is, I'm gonna go eat it. And then that jig being lighter also doesn't sink down into the silt or the sediment as much, which is really, really important. And so that's typically what I'm gonna pick up right away. The next thing is a Sanko, obviously, if I have somebody behind me, we're fishing a team tournament, or I see a lot of people in the area, then I'll go to something a little bit different like that Sanko because most people hate to fish a Sanko and everybody reaches for a jig. Now when it comes to the offshore cover, that's still hard cover, that might be brush piles, that might be rock piles, I like to do a lot of cranking because you now you don't have the grass to deal with so you can still fish open water without the grass. So I will throw a crankbait a lot of times in a chartreuse color, uh, you know a brighter color because oftentimes that water's dirtier. I'll throw a crankbait or I'll throw a drop shot if it's isolated hard cover. And those are going to be like the only two things that I'm going to use. That's what I'm going to keep on my deck to cover that water. The next thing that I'm going to talk about is how I fish those isolated patches of grass because as you get into those isolated patches you get a lot of fish in those areas. So what I start doing first is I like to flip that grass first. I'll flip it or I'll punch it depending on if it's topped out and folded over or if it's just standing tall nice green grass because generally the patches aren't just like the size of this room. Generally they're like nice little stretches. But if they are the size of this room you can still flip it. I usually go to an ounce, an ounce and a quarter weight. It's my go-to with a beaver, something like this you know a z-man palmetto bug that's what i'm going to start with but i also like to have follow-up baits to clean those areas out whether it's a sanko or a drop shot that's what i'm going to go to next you can even throw top waters over top of it because that's how you're going to get your biggest bites out of that area whether it's that punching rig or a top water if i know that this stretch is a good stretch i'm going to try to throw a bait that i know i can get the biggest fish out of that area first because if you don't a lot of times those bigger fish wise up and you just end up picking apart all of the small fish that are left over in there so you need to have a couple baits that are going to be designed for targeting bigger fish almost like you're fishing an offshore school because it kind of is. They're just in grass. But having those follow-up baits to really pick apart some of those other fish in there is also really, really important. Now when it comes to finding that other grass that's not as good but still could be good now because it killed the rest of it, I just like to throw my standard chatter baits into it typically because most oftentimes it's not great grass or it's lily pads because killing lily pads is really, really hard with chemicals. Most oftentimes it doesn't depending on the type of lily pad and so you can often frog those or you can flip those but those are going to be the tactics that I'm going to use when they kill that grass and that's how I'm going to get around fishing it now a video that I really think you guys are going to enjoy if you like this one is going to be how I go about fishing docks it's labeled what I wish somebody would have told me about fishing docks and I'm gonna have that one linked right up here so if you learned a lot and you want to learn a little bit more check that video out where I break down everything I do to find more fish on docks I think it's really going to help you guys but God bless you guys thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video